What is going on, everybody? So today I have Alex Chisnick. That's how you say your last name, by the way, right? Chisnick? Yeah, Chisnick. Yep, yep. I have Alex Chisnick with the Digital Chamber of Commerce. Today we're going to be talking about Elizabeth Warren a little bit, overall kind of crypto, Web3, blockchain strategy, of course, going into the 2024 elections. It's really interesting this year because I feel like we've had a wave of uncertainty, but we're kind of back in the bull run. But then we're in this mix where even though the price is going up and I think momentum is going up, Congress, especially Warren in the Senate, is starting to kind of double down on her anti-Web3 stance. And I'm not entirely sure why, but I'm hoping you can kind of clarify what you think their strategy is and what we can do during an election year to kind of counter that narrative and fight back. Yeah. Well, look, first of all, thanks for uh, having me on. I'm sporting the the hat, a little, uh, uh, a little bit of a preview for... Uh, we're recording this on December 18th, so it's a little early for this hat to be fully unveiled. But I'm unveiling it first in your show. I never worn it before. Look so at that. Right. Special privilege. Uh, yeah. I appreciate that's, that, that Alex. That's, that's right. <laughs> so we, we actually we had a it, – it's all true, by the way. This is this is 100% true. Um, we had a holiday party uh, last week just internally for, for uh, the employees of the chamber. Uh, and Perianne, our CEO, I'm sure people know her. Um, she's on uh, CNBC and uh, all the other mainstream channels all the time. She gives these gifts, and you know every gift came with a, with a little, uh, like a little box. But I kept this part of the gift, so I don't know if you can exactly. see this. It says it's like a little thing. It says, you know, first they ignore you, and then they laugh at you, and then they fight you, and then you win. Uh, is that a sticker, or is that like a? No, it's like a little. It's like Pop a little. Socket. Yeah, it's like a little, yeah, you hang it on. It's like a little, we can repurpose it. Oh, like an ornament, like a Christmas tree ornament. ornament. Exactly, like a Christmas tree ornament, right, that's right. There you go. Um, It was on our gift, but I'm going to actually repurpose it. Because this is, this is, it's it's so true. And we're definitely in the, then they fight you stage. Uh, They're fighting us hard. Elizabeth Warren is fighting us hard. But, um, you know, I was pretty measured when talking about her before. And I'll be fairly measured now, but a little little less so. Because it's getting a little ridiculous. And, um you know, there is Elizabeth Warren is essentially trying to uh, expand this, this is nothing new. It's her old act. It expands the, the, um, uh, the banking secrecy act to to crypto, but it it goes on beyond the basic. It says collect KYC and you're essentially a money service provider or banking provider. If you run a node. So, you know, if you or I have kids, I have two and I have tell my kids, Hey, go on and choose 12 words that open up a Bitcoin wallet. Let's say, you know, there's a 20, 2048 words, 2048 words potential that opens up Bitcoin wallets, you know, and you choose a combination of 12, it opens up a wallet. Chances are because there's so many different combinations that you open up a wallet that's empty. It's very hard to actually break into a Bitcoin wallet, but you could, you can open up a new wallet. So now my two children that are, you know, under 10 are bankers and it's the most ridiculous thing um and completely misapplying and misunderstanding crypto and i think in elizabeth warren's case she's not misapplying and misunderstanding it's it's self-serving really and it's self-serving in that she gets a lot of she raises a lot of money on the back of this and all of these anti-crypto stances and her sitting there i mean it was just to me so um so disheartening Honestly, you know, if, if Elizabeth Warren, if she, if you're listening to this or anybody of your staffers, honestly, shame on you. Like, at some point, do you find your soul? And where, where are you guys? What happened to you wanted to serve people to you stood up against the banks right, for your whole career? And now you're sitting there with a room of CEOs of all the major banks. Look, nothing wrong with bankers, right? They're, they're getting into crypto too, by yeah. the way. But you're sitting there in the room with all the major bankers, siding with the people who you've sworn to go against for the little guy like and and talking about how crypto is only used in illicit finance and to finance terrorism when your own side of the government fincen and the treasury are coming out with papers saying no wait we hope more we hope they hope more illicit finance folks or or terror organizations use crypto because it's so easy to follow and you can track exactly where the donors are coming from like it's just you know she's she's everything she's fighting for and she's using complete the complete opposite and she knows it she's a smart woman she's a very smart woman. so what do you think is the end goal i so i personally i believe she was never 
anti-big bank. I always say Elizabeth Warren was anti-medium sized bank. <clears throat> and I think that's why the big banks love her. You look at her funding record and they've always been big donors of hers, uh, even when she states to criticize them. Do you think this coincides with, I, do you think they're trying to do some kind of Dodd-Frank for crypto where they just raise the barriers to entry and just put a name on it so that their guys can get into it and like common people can't? I mean, it's interesting. She's building momentum. I saw she's got, I think, about 22 senators. I mean, 17 of them are Democrats, two of them are Republicans, and one's the independent, Angus King. And then I was looking and like 70% of them are up for re-election. Which, you know, they're all in very blue safe states for the most part. So it's not like you can primary them. But it's also interesting that, I mean, maybe there's some way to start swaying some people with some election campaign donations. I don't know. But what do you think her end goal is and how do you kind of work around her as she seems to be gaining momentum? Yeah, look, we've engaged her office a lot. We do believe in diplomacy, even though she's uh, clearly... I don't know why I call it, say enemy, but she's on the other side of, of our position and yeah. the chambers and the industries. Uh, I agree that she may be as anti-medium sized banks, but I think she's pro fundraising, pro power and pro money. And, that's a good you know, way the, the, yeah, I mean, that's really what it is, right? This is, this is the way the game is played. Um, and there's one misnomer. There's a lot of stuff going on around crypto Twitter about, you know, she's raised, or introduced 300 bills and only one of them was passed. It's like, ah, let's not worry about her. I don't know if you've seen, have you seen this stuff on? Yes. Um, and I, I saw it. I didn't comment, but I, that's a very stupid metric to me because it's not about, exactly. because every time you introduce a bill, that doesn't mean it fails. Like it could be put in an omnibus. It could be added to a current bill and it doesn't count as a win. So it's all about intent exactly. and motion. And so I know very stupid stuff. Exactly. It's stupid. It, it's people who, uh, you know, uh, it, it's good that people are getting more politically involved. And if you're listening, you should get more politically involved. Well, clearly, you're listening to Sam's podcast. Um, but uh, it's 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 like this is the amateur take on things. There's, like you said, there are many ways of getting your the intended stuff inside bills. You can uh, you talk about omnibus and so on. You're also just at a very high level changing the narrative, and when you change the narrative, when you when you say it often enough, people's mind change, minds change. I mean, we saw this with Trump. Trump does this to a great extent. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best. Until you're like, oh, this guy is the best. You know, his whole brand has been built upon this. Regardless of your politics, you have to give to Trump yeah. that he's a he knows how to command the social kind of mass attention in a way pro or against that he's always on top of mind of conversations and he monetizes that. And so uh, here we are, case in point, right? Um, but Elizabeth Warren does it very, very effectively politically. She changes narratives and she gets people to go along with her. So don't count how many bills she's introduced in the past. She could take a gigantic bill, have two or three things in there that she actually wants to pass, beef it up with the other garbage. And then you remove the other garbage. It's like, well, we only got three of the 38 things that we wanted in there, but those are the three that she's always wanted in there. The other 38 were just all red herrings, right? So there's even that way of looking at bills, right? So she's very effective at what she does. She's essentially one, the most powerful, probably one of the most powerful, maybe the most powerful Democrat uh, politician outside of call it the White House, whatever you want to think about Biden. But in the Senate, extremely, her Schumer are essentially extremely powerful Democrats. Now, the good news is, you know, how do I say this very politically? Um, well, Schumer is not on that, that list, right? Exactly. And so that's a good sign. Yes yeah. or no? I mean, he, um, yes. unless Warren's as powerful as, you know, maybe Schumer doesn't care, but he's at least not no. on the list so far. I think... I think if you look at the people who've signed up, yes, it's gaining momentum from numbers. Um, the positive news is that the most powerful Democrats are not, they haven't signed up to this one or her other endeavors. I'll just leave it that way. Um, without, you know, uh, I'll leave it that way. And I think you can read between the lines. So, yeah. um, you know, but but we're, t we're taking this very seriously and, and we're working all angles. And um, Cody, our head of policy, had a bunch of tweets on this. Um, you know, the interesting part is the bill they're introducing, a lot of it has been written by the American Bankers Association. So there's serious conflicts of interest there. 
um, you know, the bankers are writing anti-crypto bills. Uh, uh, when you say conflict ABA, of interest, you know, what do you mean? Well, the ABA is, is has a lot of the, the, the um, are writing actual parts of the bill. And so when the ABA does this, I mean, even if, if I say that's corrupt, isn't that also kind of business as usual, though, in D.C.? It is. I, I don't want to say corrupt. I'm just saying conflict of interest in terms of they uh, again, it could be no corruption. It, it could be completely illegal. Lobbying groups. We are one are. But it just shows you. It. Exactly. But it, but it shows you where the origins are and, and, and who's stacked up against who here. And so, you know, if you're a banker, right, you either full jump in and embrace crypto, which I think some of the smarter folks are doing, right, and, and kind of embrace this new tech, or you fight against it. And fighting against it makes sense. Bankers ultimately create money and create liquidity in the system, and they do it off of yields. Um, and so if you, that the whole end yields come from expansionary and monetary currencies, uh, the U.S. dollar. So if that's taken away, you're, a large part of your business is taken away. So is settlement. So mm -hmm. is this whole, the whole infrastructure we're, we're creating. And by the way, from the digital chambers perspective, we're not against banks or bankers. We're for actually traditional banks coming in and custodying tokens. You know, one of the biggest uh, problems in our space is custody. As much as we all and I have self custody options, and I think hardcore crypto folks have self custody custody options, and I firmly believe not your keys, not your coin, taking coins off exchanges. I worked for yeah. an exchange before. We're all about that. However, however, on mass scale, Grandma Mary is not going to go and have a treasure wallet, you know, under her pillow at night. She's just not going to. And so, uh, and even some of the major firms, as we've seen with Celsius and others, there's third party risk. So I frankly would rather have a Goldman or a BNY Mellon, you know, custody my assets, especially on an institutional scale. These guys are, have built their entire systems around, uh, around cybersecurity and protection. And at some point, you, you, can, you know, for, for custody, for the average Joe, they'll need to trust someone. So I'd much rather these major players have, who have great compliance systems come into the space and carve out their role, you know, adopt it. I think it will be better for everyone. But just saying that crypto companies that are node runners have to abide by the Bank Secrecy Act is not only completely misunderstanding the tech, it's in many ways physically or technologically not possible to do. So, Do you anyways. think then, I mean, to kind of back to one of my previous statements then, do you think banks just want to be the central point of failure for this? I mean, a lot of them are like the Black Rocks Fidelities of the world are dabbling in the Bitcoin ETF. It looks like we're about to have, you know, some pretty big adoption here. Do they really want to cancel it or do they just want to create barriers to entry so that they control the market? So I think it's a great question. I think, uh, and, and many folks grapple with this. And I think um, the way to approach this is to bifurcate, or actually maybe more than bifurcate, but break up the banks, okay, into, or as we really kind of call ChadFi, into different segments. So a Fidelity is primarily a broker, right? Yep. So they, they care about you trading. Um, and they do their own custody. They're the only ones from what I remember on the ETF applications that are doing their own custody, self-custody. So they're kind of doing it right. Um, and again, major financial institution, and we're all cheering on Fidelity because they're a broker, but they have good cybersecurity. Their whole business is built on not getting hacked, right, by third-party actors. So for, from a custody perspective, it's great. So anyway, brokers is one. Custodians, BNY Mellon, second. Like BNY Mellon is much more custodial bank. You have retail and commercial banks, right? Call it uh, JP Morgan is a bad example because they're kind of everything. Uh, Goldman is is like at scale institutional level investing. There's lending, uh, borrowing and lending, but institutional level. We're talking about tr moving trillions. Same thing for City and so on. They're very different than Signature, who is around, right? That's trying to yeah. carve out their niche and and grow their business. So you have a lot of different players in the banking sector um capital one is another one right great bank but they're more focused on their bank card tie-in and their card tie-in goes after the lower uh credit score folks they're not the premium 
card that uh, Chase goes after, for example. So all of these guys are positioned a little bit different. So it's a misnomer, I think, to kind of group them all together necessarily because they all want different things. Being white custody is in, right? Um, fidelity trading is in. BlackRock, they, what what do they care about? They care about AUM, assets under management. They care about yep. getting the CTF done. Kathy Wood, again, an ATF player. They, they care about managing assets. And as long as there's price volatility, they win. So very different than, than let's say, a, uh, a Goldman that's a little bit more uh, conservative. And Goldman, by its ethos, is more conservative because Goldman cares about, we've served clients for 100 some years. You know, we borrow and lend uh, on an institutional level. 99% of our business is not crypto. And while crypto can be the thing, it's going to be 0.1% of our business. So we're going to play very carefully. And until Treasury and all these guys figure their stuff out, we don't want any, you know, any kind of uh, prejudice action by the government against our 99.9% business. So they're all coming in from different angles at a different price points and different time periods based on their positioning in the market. Does that help? It does. But like, for example, I'm on the American Bankers Association website and like Fidelity is a member, right? Yeah. Um, like you're going to have non, you're going to have institutions like, I agree with you. You don't want to group everything together. But when you're at a certain level of like the top 50, top 10 money movers in the United States, there, I think there is some coordination there. Right. So that's why it's like, OK, so if Fidelity and like like the Black Rocks, for example, no, like if a Black Rock only cares about AUM, which I think they care more about AUM. And they've shown that uh, in the in the past because they seem to be politically charged on a few things. Um, when you kind of take those silos out of the equation, there certainly seems to be some talking, right? Like, do you think it's just coincidence that some of these financial institutions are trying to get a spot ETF while this bill is being pushed? There, I think there is some talking. I think ultimately people recognize, well, let me back up. There are a lot of degrees of freedom here. There's, yeah. there's also this whole crypto versus Bitcoin thing. Right, so the ETFs sure. are for Bitcoin, and while BlackRock filed an Ethereum spot uh, ETF, I'm less certain that that's going to pass, at least in the near future, yeah. than the BlackRock one. That might be just a shot, an opening salvo, and then they'll figure it out, right? Yeah. Um, plus, there are other issues with Ethereum, which is not actually built for an ETF as well as Bitcoin is. Yes, and correct. Then we can have a separate conversation, the yields and how that works and staking. And uh, we can different have a separate animal. conversation about that. It's a different animal, exactly. So when we're talking about Bitcoin specifically, I think these guys are all uh, essentially, um, uh, essentially understand where the puck is going. It's just about sequencing when they get in. Jamie Dimon sitting there and saying, well, he hates crypto and he thinks it should all be illicit. You know, I think he's either. I don't believe him when he says he, that. I th he I knows he's a marketing either. guy. I don't believe it either. I don't believe it. Or or maybe he's just completely misunderstanding uh, the, the situation. But I, I don't I don't I don't believe it. I, I think it's it's something that needed to be said that he knows uh, that he can give it away in a hearing. That's not really going to that bill isn't going to go anywhere. So. He'll be used, you know, and, and he'll be ridiculed and talked about, but it's good press. And they're building Onyx, which is, a, you know, they're, all these banks are sitting in JP Morgan's private blockchain, which is called Onyx, private yep. clearing settlement. They're also, you know, pitching these products to, to, the, to retail. So, you know, at some point at that level, it's a lot of it's orchestrated. Well, so how do you, I mean, we somehow we got to this point where Elizabeth Warren has momentum. It doesn't appear like, We've really taken an aggressive stance against her, against her. You know, the common word is educate, educate, educate. That doesn't seem to be working. Uh, and to some extent, people can be educated and still dislike you, right? Like they can understand a product and that's maybe why they don't like the product, for example. So what do you do strategically to kind of fight some of this stuff or at least, you know, get it to not pass or do what they want it to do? Edu I agree. Educate and they can still not like you and educate works. Uh, ultimately, elections have consequences. And here we are coming up to 2024. Right. So I'll, I'll say that 
we just heard that um, the fair shake, uh, there's a fair shake super PAC, which is owned by Coinbase and Dresden. They raised 78 million. I know us and others are doing uh, similar things. We're raising money for uh, for elections and we want to put some money behind some races. Um, I think we're starting to wake up as an industry. I think the, the worst ideology that we've had incidentally are from probably the hardcore Bitcoin maxi folks. And look, I love Bitcoin as much as the next person but saying it will happen with or without the US and we shouldn't get involved is absolutely the wrong thing to say and to do. Yes, it will happen with or without the US, but it will be much better for everyone if it happens with the US, you know, and, and sooner rather than later. Um, and some and of us so, like living in the US and aren't just yes, exactly. passport bros, so to speak. So some of us are committed to staying here. Exactly. I think I think it's an it's a very important point actually. That pe- a lot of people are like, "Oh, I'll move to Salvador and all this stuff." It's like, sure, you can. And I'm fed up with tax as much as the next person, and 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 some of our uh, bad policies. But I love this country. You know, at some point, it's like, you know, the Kennedy asked, "Not what you, can, you know the country can do for you, but what you can do for your country." At some point, we have to have a little bit of pride and and patriotism to stand up and say, "Hey, you know what." I'll give back. And in this case, crypto, I believe, is a worthy cause to give back. And and it's not easy being on the hill. You know, people are frustrated with some of the trade groups and some of the lobbyists. You know, try it. We have fly-ins every month. You guys want you want to join a fly-in? We have our summit coming up in May. We have an education day. Come to the hill with us. See what it feels like to actually go and talk to the, to, to people. You know, it's if it was easy, trust me, we're there are a bunch of folks, us included, that are trying as hard as we can daily we had a leadership team call today. Cody had a policy is calling in from the hill, you know, from the cafeteria, Longworth cafeteria between the, the house building. So it's try it. Come come with us. We'll happy to take you on the hill. Go educate your politician. Call. How many of your listeners are out there calling their congressman every single week or the senator? I bet you less than 1%. You yeah. know, so it's like you want, you know, things done. We do too. Support us. Donate support other trade organizations, call your, your congressman and fight for your country. It's and ultimately this is, it's not just a crypto thing. It's, you know, fight for your country. I couldn't have said that better myself. Uh, so do you think, I mean, where do you, how do you think 2024 is going to turn out? I mean, do you see this bill actually having legs and, you know, threatening passage or do you think that kind of the 2024 elections will determine what happens in the world of crypto and Bitcoin and Web3, whatever, it's, whatever term you want to use, right? It's not going anywhere. But it's also there's there's red herrings within the bill. There's also red herrings outside of the bill. There is a can see act. Um, I, I, I just it left me that the senators introduced it. It's all it, it's it's like 60 percent of Warren's bill. OK, but it's not great. But that bill actually has legs. Because that also talks about AML um, uh, AML issues, and we're working to lobby the bad things out of that bill because that bill actually does have legs, and that bill can go. Warren's bill isn't going anywhere, but it could be a red herring for the Can C Act, which is actually where we're all, you know, kept. It's our called the Can C Act. Like I can see yeah, you. I, yeah, it's C A N S E E. Interesting. Uh, yeah, let me. Let me. I'm just gonna. Um, it's uh, Senator Mark Warren, Warner, excuse me. Um, and it's the one him, Mitt Romney, this actually bipartisan, um, Mike rounds, Jack Reed, it's two senators from each side are, are pushing. It's essentially anti-money laundering to stop illicit transfers. And it has stuff in there that could go. So Which is what they normally do right. is they could take Warren's bill or say 70% of it and just Put it on to his bill. Put on to his bill, or say, "Oh man, Warren's bill is really bad, but this one isn't as bad." And then that ta- who's a target? Congress uh, senators in this case, right? Oh, wow, that was bad. But okay, we need to do something about illicit finance. Oh my God, Hamas, that's yeah. really bad. So this one, you know, versus before, this one was the actual the radical bill, right? It's kind of like think about our our politics too. You know, we let's talk about the Republicans for now. It was remember when the Tea Party. There was a period in time during 2008, 9, 10, where the Tea Party and the Republican Party was the radical side. Now these guys are like pretty moderate compared to, you know, and the left has the same thing. Um, so what so, they do is they introduce a more radical bill to make the 
to make that one look less radical, which for all I know could be a part of the strategy as well, is Warren could just keep reintroducing legislation that's worse to the point where the original bad pieces are viewed as moderate now. So uh, exactly. Look, I'm not saying that is the strategy. I'm saying that but it, it could, could be. Right? It, yeah. We don't know. Yeah. Exactly. We don't know. But but this is why, frankly, you know, as a, as a shameless plug, you have professionals, you have us and you have others. We have a uh, and, and some a lot of the stuff is is much deeper than even my understanding of it because we have policy experts across tax, we have accounting experts, you know, we have NFT experts, we have uh, AML KYC, we have a whole separate work group, and the top law firms working in AML KYC issues, securitization, security commodity issues, that are in charge of seeing where these things are, game planning this. Understanding that, hey, we should fight back again, Warren, but we should also not take our uh, the eye off the prize and can't see in other acts. And, you know, frankly, we need help. We need resources, whether that's, you know, donations. Again, we're not the only ones. There's blockchain, there's Coin Center, there, there are other worthy trade organ associations. I, you know, I, we win together. Um, I'm obviously partial to the chamber, but we all win together. And you, so you can support one of us, all of us. And also, please just call con your congressman, call your senators, and, and make sure that the crypto voice is heard, because right now they're not worried about us. They're not afraid of us. Uh, and I think we need to show that we can be dangerous and in a good way. Dangerous is to say we're going to put our votes and our money behind candidates that support innovation in the U.S. We don't want illicit finance. We don't want terrorism. We don't want people to not buy, abide by the rules. We want investor protections. I think we all want investor protections. But we also want a pro-growth, pro-innovation regime in the U.S. And we don't want to send jobs and tokens offshore and remove the U.S. investor from, from an ability to access the most exciting and the most one of the most revolutionary pieces of technology in the last 100, 200 years. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself. Do you have any closing notes? I know we're running up on the uh, 30 minute mark here, but I just want to give you an opportunity to say anything else. Or I know you already yeah. told everyone how they could get involved, which I would encourage them to do so. Yeah, listen, get involved and, you know, as a plug for you, for you. So uh, I'm sure your listeners know about the great stuff you're doing at the state level. And there's the USBC, the US uh, Blockchain Essential State Coalition, where, you know, Sam was part of in Texas and Wyoming and other folks are part of these all these organizations we do federal you know they do state it's it's just important and it's important to have your voices heard and so you know uh digitalchamber.org slash donate is where you can donate and support us and again we're not the only ones but if you care about the space and if you care about the u.s there's really no better time the time to get involved is now truly truly now um we're coming up in a very big year next year and so if we don't let our voice if we don't have our voices heard now and into the next cycle then we've missed an enormous amount of opportunity and people will not take us seriously we they just won't um, because the banks and tradfi and if any other any other industry big tech you know cell phones everyone has very effective campaign uh donations fundraising uh, efforts and crypto doesn't right now and so this is the time to really 2024 is a time to walk the walk so walk the walk please that's all i ask in any way you can get engaged politically walk the walk awesome thanks alex so i appreciate you coming on the show and i'm sure we'll have you back on here in the future i'd love to anytime